Uh-huh. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, the rational zero test. First thing that you need to do for a problem like this, I asked you to find all of the zeros. So, the first thing we're going to do is do p over q. This is, again, going to tell us all the possible rational zeros. You're basically taking the factors uh, plus or minus of 10 over 1. That's my p. That's my q. OK? So the factors of 10 plus or minus are going to be plus. So it's going to be plus or minus 10, comma, plus or minus 5, comma, plus or minus 2, comma, plus or minus 1. Yes? No, never mind, never mind. Okay. Those, you have to do plus or minus. I kind of have a little too many people talking when we're just going over this. So you're just taking the factors of 10, which is your p, over the factors of 1. The factors of 10 are 10, 5, 2, and 1. The factors of 1 are, are, one are obviously just 1. Now, it's nice when you have 1 as your q, because basically your rational zeros are So therefore, your rational zeros are just going to be ten, plus or minus 10, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 1. Right? Now, again, as I mentioned, guys, there's two different ways. Yes? Huh? Oh, OK. Well, I'll be moving. Um, there's two different ways that you guys can determine if a 0 actually works. Because these are just the possible zeros. We don't know if these zeros actually work. So the one way we could do, which we talked about, which Kaylee represented, is we could use the remainder theorem. And if I plug in f of 1, the only way I know that this is a 0 is if f of 1 equals 0. Very good. OK, so let's plug in f of 1 and see what happens. 1 minus 1 minus 7 plus 5 plus 10. Because that's a 0 plus 1. One, one is a 0. It's a possible 0. Sorry. We don't know which one are the zeros or not. So you have negative 2. I'm getting 8. Anybody else get 8? So right now you're just doing that. So I'm right just there. testing. Yeah, because unless you have a calculator, unless you have a calculator, when you have a calculator, you can plug in the graph and see where the x-intercept is, because the x-intercept will tell you the 0. I'm showing you, because it asked you to use the rational 0 test, so you had to do that. But then, if you have a calculator, you can just find out what, which of these are zeros, which of these are the x-intercepts. If you don't have a calculator, you have to do 1, then negative 1, then 2, then negative 2, then 3, then negative 3, or then 5, negative 5, 10, negative 5. And hopefully, you find one of those to be a 0, right? And the remainder theorem is the alternative of the synthetic division value for the rational zero. Yeah, yeah, because the other way to test a 0 the other way you could do to test is 0, because so now we know that 1 is not a 0. Positive 1 is not a 0. So now let's try negative 1. Well, instead of plugging in negative 1, I'm going to use synthetic division, because synthetic division works the exact same way as the uh, factor theorem. So now I just take the coefficients, which is 1, negative 1, negative 7, 5, and 10. So I bring down the 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 1 is going to be a positive 3. Negative 7 plus positive 3 is going to be a negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 1 is going to be a positive 4. I thought negative 1 worked. Did I do my math right? Oh, that's 2. That is right. Negative 2 times negative 1 is a positive 2. Negative 7 plus 2 is going to be a negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 1 is going to be a positive 5. 5 plus 5 is going to be 10. 10 times negative 1 is a negative 10. So therefore, you guys can see that my remainder is 0, correct? Yeah. OK. Now again, think of this. If you have a number divided by a factor, for instance, let's say 12, or let's say 6 is a factor of 12, right? Yes? Can you further break down 6 into more factors? Yes, yes because right now, right now, I said that negative 1 is the 0. If negative 1 is a 0, what is the factor? x plus 1. So what I want you guys to understand is right now, by doing division, for instance, 6 divides into 12 how many times? 
two times. Two times six equals 12. Everybody agree with me? So if I say this divides into this factor divides into that, that means I can rewrite this as x plus 1 times my quotient, which is the remainder constant linear quadratic cubic. x cubed plus x squared minus 5x plus 10. Now, remember we talked about how to find the zeros. You write them in factored form, and then use zero product property. Yes? Thank you. So however, if I use zero product property, we already know that's going to be a zero, right? That's easy. Yes? Because you set use zero product property. But this, is that going to be easy to, to figure it out? Now, actually, you could factor this by grouping. Yeah, you could factor that by grouping. But what I want you guys to understand, though, there's another way to quickly do this. Again, so now we know that 1 or negative 1 is a 0, right? I could say, well, is there any other numbers that are also zeros, right? And so what I could do is keep on going down the list. Now, I did not didn't really cheat, but I used graphing technology, just like you could type in Google at home and see where the graph crosses. I noticed that this graph also crosses at the number 2. So guess what? I know 2 is also a 0 of the factor. So basically, it's like saying, hey, 6 divides into 12 two times, right? But what other factor you know is also a factor of 12? You could say 3. Can 3 divide into 6? Yeah, so now I take my new factor that's a 0, and then I divide it into the, next fact, the last factor, 1, negative 2, negative 5, 10. Bring down the 1. 1 times 2 is 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. Negative 5 plus 0 is negative 5. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. 0. Does everybody follow me? Just doing synthetic division. I know I'm doing it very quickly, but just trying to make it anything. Well, it's not the first time I went over it. I'm just trying to do it quickly. You bring down the first number, multiply diagonal, put the sum here. Add vertical sum. Then, so. This is going to be your remainder, your constant, your linear, and your quadratic. So basically what I did now is I took my function and I broke apart this into if this is the 0, then my factor is x minus 2. And then when I divided x minus 2 into that factor, when I took x minus 2, divided it into this, what did I get left? x squared minus 5. Now, can I, can I solve each of these for 0? Yeah. Yes. So now I do the 0 product property. I replace this with 0, and I say x plus 1 equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0, and x squared minus 5 equals 0. Therefore, x equals negative 1, x equals 2. Here, I have to add a 5 of both sides. x squared equals positive 5. Then to take this, I have the square root. And please remember the most important thing, when you introduce the square root, you have to include the plus or minus. Yes? What two? Oh, I graphed it. I knew that we used, we tested and found negative 1 was a 0, right? You could start doing the next testing. 2, negative 2. And if those weren't zeros, then you do 5, negative 5, right? Well, I graphed it, and I saw that 2 was an x-intercept. That means it would also was a 0. So that's why I did 2 was the next 0 I was going to use for division. Okay. If, if you didn't know that, you would just have to move up. Just try 2, and then try negative 2, and see which one works. Okay. Um, but that's why graphing is so helpful. Then, so my final answer is x equals plus or minus the square root of 5. So my zeros are negative 1, negative square root of 5, positive square root of 5, and 2. Anybody have any questions on that? It's a long problem. It's in depth. 